All right, so let's talk about narcissism for a moment here. And I don't want you to just take my word for it as a narc in recovery, but I want you to take the word of the DSM-5, okay? So I've got the DSM-5 pulled up. We're going to read through some. We're going to talk about it a little bit, okay? So diagnostic criteria for narcissistic personality disorder, a pervasive pattern of grandiosity and fantasy or behavior, the need for admiration, lack of empathy, and beginning by early childhood and present in variety of contexts as indicated by five or more of the following. So there's nine different attributes about a narcissism. You have to have at least five of them to be considered diagnosed or to get a diagnosis that you have narcissism. Okay, so let's go through them. Number one, has a grandiose sense of self-importance. So example would be they exaggerate achievements and talents, expects to be recognized as superior or without, without even the achievements to be able to match. Okay. So with this aspect, a lot of narcissists you'll see out there portrayed as being these big, like grandiose people who think that they're the best thing ever. Okay. They're the they're the, the best person in the world. You know, they're better than a uh, loaf like sliced bread. Like they're the best thing ever. Okay. They really think that the world revolves around them and they're surprised at times when other people don't think that. And as a result, they'll rage, they'll lash out, they'll blame other people for taking the spotlight off of them. There's a lot of different types of narcissists, a lot of different vari variables of, you know, being overt, being covert, being vulnerable, being the victim. There's all these different types in one sense, but at the core of it, a lot of times is the idea of their ego and thinking that they're way better than everyone else out there, even if they have nothing to show for it or nothing to prove for it. Second one, is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Sometimes this is stuff that a narcissist is seeking out, is thinking about, or is just fantasizing to the point where it consumes them in different aspects. Like they want to have power. And a lot of times that'll show when they have power over people. They want to, you know, find ideal love. So as a result, they'll continue to go from person to person to person because their version of ideal love typically has themselves at the center. And that's why ideal love won't work in that aspect. Uh, they'll think about like how brilliant they are or how amazing they are. And they'll keep having these fantasies and thoughts that'll keep compelling them back to having that high ego. Number three, believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. So this is kind of like that entitlement idea where like I'm on a certain level and I'm only going to interact with other people that are on my level. So let's give you a couple of examples. And some of these are from people that I've talked to, people I've interacted with. Um, there is one person who was going to a um, like a fundraiser function where they were setting up Christmas trees. Okay, And they were there setting up Christmas trees. And one of the things they need to do when you set up a Christmas tree is to you know take all the branches and kind of flock all the branches so that um, it's either covered with snow or that they're all like spaced out just right so it looks like a tree, not just a pinata. Okay, And so when they're there... The person looked at everybody else and be like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to leave that to you people. Okay. That sense of entitlement, that sense of an idea of I am special, I am unique, and I'm not going to lower myself to your status. I'm not going to lower myself to whatever's going on. Oftentimes you'll see this in like a work environment as well, where another person is very degrading to other people and thinks that they're the smartest person in the room. So they'll look at everyone else and be like, you guys are just stupid. Like I am way more intelligent. I'm way more attractive. Like whatever it might be that a lot of times they're going to slide that direction and they're going to think that. Okay. Um, number four on here. So four out of nine requires excessive admiration. So this goes back to the ego. And this goes back even deeper inside to the narcissist shame and insecurity. And as a result, they're going to require an excessive amount of admiration. This is why oftentimes they're looking for other people, whether that's a new partner or whether that's someone to cheat with, because they're looking for someone that doesn't know the complete them, that doesn't know everything that they're going through or how they're attacking or coming at other people, and is looking for someone that is just literally going to come alongside and adore them. 
like make them feel like they're the best person on the planet really just like serve them think of them as like the king and they just have to bow down and worship them like that's literally sometimes how far it goes where they want and they need that excessive admiration okay number five has a sense of entitlement unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or her expectations Okay, this one here is the idea with that sense of entitlement of I deserve this, you deserve to be underneath me, I deserve something while you deserve nothing. Okay, it comes underneath that idea of unreasonable expectations. So doesn't matter what your expectations are, my expectations are this. So for instance, I should have control of looking through your phone, but don't you dare touch my phone. I should know where you are 24 seven, but don't you dare question me where I was the past 24 hours. I should know your location. I should know what you did. I should be able to keep track of your time going back and forth to the store. And you shouldn't question me when I take two hours to go get a soda. This is the idea of the sense of entitlement. Oftentimes as well, it also has the idea of the automatic compliance with his or her expectations. So like if the narcissist says, like, I want you to do this, and the person says, no, I can't, or the person is like, I can't right now, a lot of times you'll get anger right away because they're like, I'm entitled to you to serve me right away. That's not love. Anyways, um, so the sense of entitlement. So that's number five. Number six is um, interpersonally exploitative. So it takes advantage of others to achieve his or her ends. So this is where we start getting the idea of gaslighting, manipulation, love bombing, all these type of characteristics that kind of fall under this where someone is actually exploiting other people by using praise, adoration, gifts to be able to get something from the other person, to be able to get the other person to do things for them or to feel better about themselves by having someone continue to come back to them for them to get a supply, okay? So with this, you'll have people take advantage by the gaslighting, by the manipulation, uh, by love bombing, all these type of things. So with gaslighting, you have more along the idea that they are taking advantage of other people by making other people feel crazy, making other people doubt their reality, making other people doubt the facts and the truth that just happened and being able to change that in the other person's mind. Like, no, that didn't happen. Like, this happened. Like, I can't believe you thought that. Like, that... You, they completely try to change the other person's reality. They exploit other people. They take advantage of them just to be able to get through their own ends. Number seven, lacks empathy. So is unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. So typically this would be along the lines of at times acknowledging or seeing that other people have feelings and being unwilling to actually connect with those, being unwilling to have that empathy. Empathy often will lead to vulnerability, which will touch on honesty, which will touch on truth, which will get the narcissist to the place where they'd have to admit they're wrong, and that is taboo for them. They don't want to go to that at all. So as a result, if they even have sections or moments of empathy, it'd be better to shut those down than ever get to the place that they'd have to be vulnerable, honest, or admit the truth about what's actually happening in the relationship. Number eight is often envious of others or believes others are envious of him or her. So a lot of times you'll see narcs that are envious of other people, their status, their house, their boat, their kids, their wife, whatever it might be. But a lot of times too, you will see narcissists out there that really think that everyone else has those feelings for them. Because remember, they're the center of their universe. Their ego is off the charts. They want everyone to be able to serve and worship them. So when they're walking down the street and they make eye contact with someone and that someone looks back at them, they're just like, yep, I know that person's checking me out. I know that person's looking at me. I know that person wants me. These are some of those thoughts that'll go through the narc's head because they think that others are envious of them. It's crazy. Number nine. Shows arrogant, haughty behaviors and attitudes. This one at this point is like pretty much self-explanatory, especially if you've ever dealt with a narcissist. They will be prideful. They will show arrogant behaviors. They won't care about how they steamroll, o o steamroll over other people, how they manipulate and how they destroy those people. 
Thank you guys for watching. This is narcissism and just trying to be able to share, bring awareness to people of the nine characteristics. You need five to be diagnosed. And these are what's out there. And this is what people deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, either that struggle with narcissism or struggle with the narcissistic abuse that's going on in their lives. That's why I'm on here, trying to bring awareness, hope, growth, healing, and change to other people out there to be able to get people to the place where they get into therapy, acknowledge their narcissistic traits, or whether they get into therapy to be able to work through their emotional abuse that they've had to put up with in dealing with a narcissist. That's why I'm here. I hope you guys enjoy. Get help, continue to learn, continue to grow.